In previous tutorial, we understood about requirement management in ALM, where we understood that how we can create a requirement, how we can mention the details of a particular requirement when it is being created. Also with that, we understood different types of requirement and various status to a requirement which can be given. Also some of the basic important things like how you can attach several information with respect to a requirement and what other necessary and mandatory fields are to be updated when creating or managing a requirement in ALM. In today's tutorial, we'll be working on some more options which were there on the toolbars beyond the basic understanding of requirement management in ALM. So let's understand more about the same today. In previous tutorials, we have understood a lot about creating and managing the requirements under ALM. In the previous tutorial, we accessed the requirement tab and we created these four requirements which are the functional requirements and also understood a lot of details which should be mentioned while creating the requirement. In order to modify and understand more beyond those management of the requirement, we do have a lot of interesting figures and facts about requirement management within ALM. So first of all, let's start with understanding how do I see the details of a requirement because on the canvas, we only see the detail of like login name and the status and the requirement ID and even the author. But yes, we do have a lot of other details which are associated with a requirement and what else we can do as a part of requirement management. To start with, I have to look at the details or what if I want to modify the details of a particular requirement, then you have to you can switch using the view option and right now you are in a requirement tree view which basically shows the hierarchy of a requirement and then you have a details view which will allow you to see the details of each and every requirement so right on the right side you will have details of each requirement you just have to select a requirement in order to see the respective details now for example in login we forgot to include the uh, releases which are I think that no for modify a ticket we forgot to include that so what if I want to include I just have to select the requirement details view and say ok and then add the cycles to that so that's one thing like how to see the details of a requirement now what if I want to update a requirement so this is how you can fill in the details and just move you do not have a save button in ALM everything gets saved as soon as you fill it and switch to the next option. So it's automatically saved. You don't have a save button in the ALM. The next thing important to understand is the third view which was listed here. So there is another view which is called as requirements grid. Requirement grids view allow you to list all the requirements aligned to the margin for quick access to the details and also allow you to update the status simultaneously for all the requirements. So if you have to manually update the status of each requirement, then using the details view will take a long time to switch between each requirement and then look at the details of it in order to update. But here it can just drop down from here and change the status and one by one you can go on moving to the next one. So each view of requirement has its own significance and we just need to understand what exactly and which can be used at the right point. Let's go back to the details view as we have got something more to explore there. Like remember when we were creating we had only details, rich text and attachments. But once we have created the requirement we got the linked effects, requirement traceability, test coverage, business model linkage, risk assessment and history. So as you see that ALM allows you to do all these sort of activities and even link all other entities which are created and associated with this requirement, you can very well do that. So tomorrow, if you run a test related to this requirement and it has failed and got a defect there, then the defect can be very well linked. But we will come back to this and understand better once we have a defect. Also to add, a defect can be raised from any of the window in ALM. I will tell this every time when I move to every module. So you can just click on this button here and it says add a new defect. So you are allowed to create a new defect right here because during the review of a requirement you may find anomalies and you can log a defect here. But yes we will talk about defects in more detail when we come to that tutorial. 
including the test coverage. When you create the test cases for this requirement, you can associate the test using the feature the test coverage. So this will build the traceability or in fact have a linkage model to tell which requirement is associated with which particular test case. Additionally, we do have business models which you see at the bottom here. So business models are the use case diagrams or the models which are created using UML, Unified Markup Language. Business model is only the option in ALM which is not created within ALM. For example, if I even create a new folder here, that is flight reservation, which is my project folder, and I try to create the next option, it says import model, not new model. So that means a model cannot be created with help of ALM. All you do is you create it externally using UML diagrams and then import it here. But what is a business model? A business model is a graphical representation of entire application. A requirement might be listed in hierarchical manner or maybe in a sequence or the order which you have created it. But it is difficult for a tester or developer to understand that what is the connectivity between them, what is the dependency between them, how different modules of a particular applications are interconnected to each other. So business model will give a clear picture of what exactly a business model is and how requirements are connected to each other and also help you to understand the dependency. Additionally, if you switch back to the tree view, we have so many details about a requirement which we listed like priority, releases, targets and the review status, but we don't see all of them. So that can be done using this option called as select columns. And select columns allow you to select what kind of features or details of requirement you want to include in order to view them side by side. So if you scroll down here, you may have the requirement type as well. You may include the reviewed status and so on. If you want to switch them up and down, you can make use of this buttons here to reorder them and say OK. Anytime you want to remove anything, you can still remove that. So you can see now all the details listed here. As you see, the requirement has folder types have no status. That means it is not applicable. If you want to move up any of the requirements here, you can do the same thing using these buttons here. Move up and move down. This is an auto mail option here. If you want to send an email to any of your team members about any kind of modification you would have done, you can directly integrate to your email account and you can send a mail from here. Further, you do have search options, zoom in, zoom out to see the details and a refresh button to anytime refresh to see the progress. As multiple people working will be working on the same project, they may have a lot of things to update and share. So you use the refresh button to pick up the latest version of it. If you want to delete a requirement, you can delete the requirement from here. You can also do a copy paste operation using the right click option. So you can copy the requirement and paste it in a different folder if in case you have created one. But yes, we will be looking into all other details here later in the upcoming tutorials. Additionally, at any point of time, quickly if you want to see the details of any requirement, there is also a quick toolbar option, requirement details, to open the requirement and see the details, which will have the same interface what you had in the requirement details view. So this is what we have from the details of the requirements in the requirement management tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with another interesting tutorial in the next episode. All right, so I hope this tutorial was very beneficial to you to understand and explore the untouched areas of the requirement tab in the ALM, whereas also some of the features which might be required not so frequently, but yet important to be aware of when working with ALM or any specific tab. Don't forget, the requirement has many such fields which will be required as we proceed ahead with our learning and prepare test cases and execute them. So yes, we will be looking into the different tabs again and again as we proceed with the execution of the project. So stay tuned for that. I hope this tutorial was very beneficial to you in order to understand the requirement tabs much better. We will be getting back to you with another interesting tutorial on ALM again. So stay tuned for that. Should you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well. 
Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.